morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are having a fantastic day. If you're new to the channel, my name is Parker Nierenstein, and this is Vehicle Virgins. Bosch invited me all the way out to Michigan to show you guys the latest and greatest in current and future automotive technology. Anything from a 590 horsepower all electric UTV. I saw that earlier today. I cannot wait to share that with you guys to the latest in traction control technology demonstrated in a new Corvette Z06. We've got collision avoidance over there reacting to bicycles. Let's see what the day has in store. Our first demonstration is in the new Cadillac CT6. I reviewed this car a while back and absolutely loved it, but Bosch has added in rear wheel steering. They're gonna be able to turn it on and off to feel the difference that it makes with the CT6 in terms of high speed stability and low speed maneuverability. We're about to do a slalom course with rear wheel steering turned off and then compare it again with rear wheel steering on. It takes a lot of effort. Yeah, that's, that's kind of all over the place. Oh wow, yeah, that's a huge difference. <laughs> yeah. And again, it's um, looking here, that's wow. about, it's about two degrees at the rear axle. So. That's, a, <laughs> that's actually really significant, wow. There's no doubt that rear wheel steering is the way of the future. You would effectively shorten the wheelbase at low speeds and lengthen it at high speeds, but actually being able to feel the difference between having the rear wheel steering on and then off in the CT6 really put it into perspective how effective this system is. Next up, we're going to test out some of Bosch's current technology involving traction control and launch control present in the new Z06. Let's go ahead and suit up and get in the car. demonstrating Bosch's current traction control and launch control technology. I've done launch control in an automatic Z06, but never in a seven speed manual one. Track mode, vehicle, PTM mode, uh, clutch in, throttle down, release the clutch. And go. track and then we have the performance traction I think set to sport one. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So there's there's five different tiers in there that have varying levels of uh, traction control uh -huh. and stability control changes. As you go higher in number you're getting so behind me is the Maverick UTV, and the coolest part about it is you can actually control it using an RC car remote control. So I'm about to hop into the passenger seat and actually control this without touching the steering wheel, but using a remote. Let's check it out. <laughs> the actual brake pedal move. All right, so I've got the control to the Maverick right now. This is the throttle, forward is brake, and you turn it using this wheel here. That way you can go a little bit faster too if you want. Well, you control the brake too? No, uh, yeah, I can do that. Because I don't have access to it. <laughs> <laughs> So check this out, we can get a closer look at how the steering system actually works. Here's the remote control, electronically controlled steering via this motor here. There's also braking control that's linked up to both the actual steering wheel and the brakes, but this controller as well. 
<laughs> that is so cool. And obviously guys, that is not fake. The steering wheel is actually moving. And then check out the braking system. The actual brake pedal goes down as I push my finger forward. I'm now about to go in a ride in one of the coolest vehicles they have here today. It's called the Nikola UTV. I'm guessing Nikola Tesla. It is an all electric UTV. It's got four independent motors, one for each wheel, it makes 590 horsepower and 720 pound feet of torque. And it has Fox suspension from a Raptor. 16 inches of front travel, 18 inches of travel in the rear. Let's see what this thing is all about. Apparently zero to 60 in 3.4 seconds for an off-road vehicle that looks like that. That's pretty cool. Look at those digital displays. That is awesome. All right, so what are we in right now? Uh, yes, we're currently in the Nikola NZT. So it is an all wheel drive, fully electric utility vehicle um, that really is in the class of its own, in a sense. Um, we could actually have this conversation while we're driving with the exception of the wind noise, obviously, sure. which is not something you can do um, in a, you know, a loud IC engine vehicle. So there are quite a few benefits. It really helps at the center of gravity because the battery pack is the floor of the vehicle. Sure. Having that low CG really does kind of, it's actually a bit of a lifesaver sometimes. Cool. That's, is this a touch screen? Yep, it is. Very cool. Battery cap capacity, wow, 79 mile range at 61%. That's pretty huge. You know, just this is just the prototype, but eventually we'll get into series and we'll actually be able to, uh, they'll have one that's even larger. So yeah, they have a 125 range. kilowatt hour battery. Yep. That's bigger than a Tesla Model S P100D. That's pretty crazy. Oh yeah, so, it's silent. Yeah, where's this just kind of, you know, driving along, putt putting around and it's, yeah, you pretty much hear the tires in the ground. Feel that there, the vehicle slowing down on its own, that's regenerative braking. So the vehicle is actually able to effectively capture its own momentum's energy and put it back in the battery. Well, I gotta say highlight of the day so far was the Nikola all electric UTV. Now this is just the alpha level prototype. This isn't even the full production vehicle. So it has around 400 horsepower and <laughs> it pulled really, really hard. It's a weird sensation being in a completely open air electric UTV, getting to hear the actual suspension moving around. That thing is crazy capable and I'm excited to see when they actually make the full production version what that thing looks like. I mean, just look at the suspension travel. 18 inches in the rear, three inch shocks, just like on the Raptor, but significantly more travel than the Raptor. All right, so we've gone from Corvettes to UTVs, and now I'm in something called a skid steer. Check this out, this is the first time ever being in construction equipment. We can't drive it, unfortunately, but I imagine that would be pretty fun. We've got joysticks on the left and the right, and there is a ton of really cool technology that's usually employed in cars that they've got in this now. So we've got a surround view camera, we've got sensors all over. Because this actually spins on tracks, it can actually rotate around itself. If there's a person to the left, you could easily run them over. Now there's got sensors, so that can't happen. Can you imagine how much fun I would have if I actually owned one of these things? So here we've actually got this augmented reality on an iPad that's actually showing us different components of the vehicle has huge implications. If a mechanic wanted to work on it, you could simply click on one of the components, then get a whole bunch of information here, even potentially tell how much life it has left before needing to be replaced, click on it, and potentially order that part. So now we've gone over some cool technologies in cars, construction equipment, and UTVs, but what about in large semi trucks? So something that is in a lot of cars nowadays, but is not in big trucks, is electronically assisted steering and lane keep assist. So if you're driving down the highway, it actually keeps the vehicle within the lanes. Something I didn't think about is that on a very big truck, when you have a large crosswind, that is a large area for the wind to blow against and you're gonna actually have to put input into the steering wheel to maintain a straight line. Well, in this, we have an electronically assisted steering, which is a first in trucks. Check this out. And this actuator is able to connect to the hydraulic steering in order to make small inputs. Another awesome use for that is if you lose power in the engine, imagine how hard it would be without any sort of power steering 
to actually move this off the highway onto the side of the road. But if the engine is cut, you still have that electric actuator, so it's still easy to turn. Check out the mirrors here. So these are actually the smallest mirrors that are legally allowed in the US. They are 50 square inches. And because of that, it actually allows this to be significantly more fuel efficient, one to 2% just from the mirrors. And we've got cameras right here that are connected to screens on the inside. How cool is this? That give you a much better view of the road than you would get from a conventional mirror. So you can look here, normal mirror, and then you've got this nice zoomed in view and then a very zoomed out view. We've got the same thing over here. Their plan is actually to introduce it into the A pillar. So how cool is that? Not only are these A pillars just a structural component, they're also useful for increased visibility. Apparently I'm about to go for a ride in a semi truck. I've never been in a moving 18 wheeler before. And we're gonna go around that same banked turn that we did earlier in the day in the CT6 and the Z06 but in an 18 wheeler. Look how massive this thing is. The fact that it has active steering assist is beyond ridiculous. All right, so we're about to send this at like 100 miles an hour, right? <laughs> to give you guys an idea, this is about as fast as we were going in that Cadillac CT6. So he's about to demonstrate the technology I was talking about earlier, where if the engine shuts off and you lose all power steering, you still have electronically assisted steering. He's gonna show the difference between the two when you have to do it manually versus with some assist. So we've lost hydraulic steering now. See how it's still on ease of Yeah, wow. So he's gonna make a little maneuver here, show you a lane change. So it's still able to lane change with ease. Yep. Now, if he shuts off the electric assist yep. right now, so we fully lost the electric assist, we like losing all your. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's how you expect it to be in a large truck like this. Yep. So wow! Wow! Really trying to crank the wheel. Now it's back on. Turn electronics back on. Now it's easy. Wow! Yeah. Well, I'd say that was a pretty awesome day. Getting to explore the current and future automotive technology was a very fascinating experience and I had a lot of fun, especially in that freaking all electric UTV. Could you imagine if I had one of those for a long-term review? I know a couple places that we could take one of those out on. So Nicola, please. I need to review that car. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. Thank you so much, Bosch, for hosting me in Michigan. We've got a bunch of epic Michigan content coming your way, guys. I look forward to seeing you next video. <laughs>